Hi, and welcome to this short video showing you the capabilities of the new Automation Next and the fuzzy selectors it can use internally. This is a test case which is going to verify the login capabilities of our UI Bank admin application. And the way it works is we want to check that when I try and log in with invalid credentials, I do get the login fail screen appears on the uh, application. So here we can see we've got the standard automation going through, and then we're going to basically verify that the login fail does exist um, and then close down the application. So if I execute this particular test case, what it will do, it will go through open up the admin application, do the login, verify the login failed appears and come back and obviously that test case is now passed. But what will happen is over time the developers will get in there and they'll want to be changing, upgrading the new versions and here we've got a new version of the um, admin application and I've just simulated this by passing it an argument of v2 and that will then allow the system to show us a completely different login screen. So the bank has now been rebranded, we've got a new logo. We've also changed the username to ID and password to PWD, but also we've changed the submit button to now a login button. Functionally, this is identical to the old version, but clearly this is going to be a challenge now for the um, automation and the robot to go in there and actually perform the login. And indeed, if we try and run exactly the same test case with the new version, so I can say I can simulate that by passing the argument of v2 to the same executable. What we'll see is when we execute this, it will perform the same action, start the application. This time we get a new login screen and it's now having difficulty trying to find where to actually type the username. And eventually it will time out and tell us that the um, selector could not be found because indeed the username field doesn't actually exist anymore for that particular selector. But what we can do is in the new version uh, of our automation using the automation next, this is the uh, same exact test case um, but this time using the new activities which uses behind the scenes this new mechanism of identifying uh, the particular objects to interact with. So what I can do is again I can run exactly the same test case. This time if I run it we'll see this was recorded against the legacy version of the login screen so it will go through open up a legacy version, perform a login, verify that the login window failed and come back and it will have passed. So if we now go in to the um, application and change this just as we did before to version 2, what we'll see is this time I can go in and execute this and it will log, log in using exactly the same mechanism even with the completely new and redesigned user interface of version 2. So how is all this working? Well, if I just go in and open up the version 2 of my application, as I mentioned, this test case was created against the older version um, of the login screen. So if we go into this first interaction, which is typing in the username into the username field, if I go in and edit the target, what we'll see is Automation Next can still actually uniquely identify the target correctly as this particular field. If I go into the settings here to get more details of what's going on, what we can see is we've broken the, the selection down into three sections. We've got the selector itself. So if I click on this icon here to show me all the matches for that particular selector, just as in the first case, it comes back and says it couldn't find any matches because this selector is now invalid. Some of this has actually changed for this new version. So what Automation Next does, it says, okay, I can't find that selector. I am now going to use a fuzzy selector. And what the fuzzy selector will do, well, depending on the level of accuracy, will go in there and use that selector, but automatically put some like, wild characters in there uh, and some logic behind the scenes so it doesn't need to be like, a 100% accurate match. It will go through and use the best uh, logic possible to still uniquely identify the particular fields. And we can change the accuracy with this slider here. And what you'll notice on this version, this is a method which was uh, used to correctly identify the particular target um, item we've got. What we can also have is you'll notice we have the anchor. Now the anchors are automatically created when we recorded the, this particular test case uh, and this can also be used to uniquely identify the particular objects on our screens to make sure that any slight modifications uh, don't actually alter the uh, accuracy of the selection. Even if now the fuzzy selector also fails, what we can also then do is go down and even 
fall back into using the good old fashioned image um, selection. So we could go through and say, okay, we want to also try and identify the element using this particular image. And again, you can you can change the image accuracy. But all of this is completely automatic and behind the scenes. And uh, hopefully you'll realize that using automation next in your test cases will ensure that you're gonna be able to create significantly more maintainable and robust test cases. And any minor modifications your developers do won't propagate through to making all of your test cases invalid. Thank you for watching.